James from Junkyard Fox, thank you so much for joining us. And today we are gonna do an EDC update. Now we are out here in the beautiful Jemez Mountains of New Mexico. It's nice and cold, snowy, and you know, so this is gonna be my EDC update for the winter time, and it's gonna be an exciting video because we have a ton of new stuff. Not only do we have clothing to match this kind of weather, but at the same time we have a new multi-tool, new knife, new packs, new hat, everything, just a ton of new stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and go first. Uh, give you guys my EDC rundown, and then from there we'll switch, and then Corvo will give you his EDC update, EDC update as well. So thank you for joining us. Let's get started. Okay, so first things first, let's start up here. Now this hat I got back during summer, so you might have already seen it several videos ago. Uh, definitely we had it during the summer camping and also the prickly pear cactus fruit uh, the making the juice of it. So this hat I ordered from backcountry.com. It is a company called Brixton and this model is called the Thorpe 2. I really like it. It is 100% cotton so it's middle of the road for all seasons. So living where I live you know you want a, a wide brim hat because we have a lot of open space, a lot of sunlight. Um, and for years I had the straw hat, a, a generic straw hat and it did just fine during summertime but being straw it's kind of weak during uh, the, the colder months. So this one, once again, being cotton, it's going to be easier uh, for, for all year round. It's just a you know, middle of the road type of hat. I really like it. Um, like I said, the only thing I did not like that I had to modify is the inside. Now the inside band was like a very light beige. I found it very ugly. It made it gave it a really cheap look. You could see it right there, like on these corners. So I went ahead and modified it and got paint. Um, die and just went around it it's not the best job in the world but it just helps it look just a little bit better so let me put it on and it's not so much of an eyesore and then i went ahead and added a yuko stormproof match you know those things are little tanks and uh, it's mainly for aesthetics really i just wanted to do something a little bit different and give it some personality so uh there we go my hat now once again like i said this hat is cotton, so it's not wool. It's not something that's going to keep me really warm during summertime. But at the same time, I could still use it in the warmer months as well, unlike wool. So in case I need something more specialized, because we're out here we have snow, we have strong winds, I might be using this one. I'll be alternating to this hat instead. Now, this hat I bought in Target. Uh, I bought it at Target last January. And uh, you've seen it if you saw our January winter camping trip. Um, so really warm. Well, it was only like 25 bucks from a company called Goodfellow. Once again, Goodfellow is sold at Target. And uh, you're going to be hearing that name, that brand, quite often in this video. But uh, very simplistic, but it works. I really like it. It keeps me warm, especially when I'm sleeping. So uh, yeah, these are my two hats that I'm wearing for the winter. It really depends just how harsh. Back where I come from, it's we have pretty mild winters, so this one will do fine. Up here, you know, once again, I don't know if you can see it right now, but it's just there's snow on the ground and, and really strong winds. So I'll be switching to this later on in the evening or when I'm sleeping. <laughs> Not as cool looking. It's a little dorky, but it's definitely warm. And I like how you can just strap this up and you have your ears covered. You have your cheeks. So... Once again, this one's definitely more specialized for this type of climate, though I wouldn't be using it very often because I don't live in a very cold environment. Moving on to my coat. Now this coat I just received a couple weeks ago and I am loving it. Now this I ordered from Target.com. Once again, it's the, by the same brand Goodfellow that the Trapper hat is. And this one is definitely an upgrade from my previous coat because this one is 65% wool. Not 100%, but once again, where I live, we don't really have too much cold climate, but this one's definitely a step up from my old green one, that army looking one that I wore for like five years. And that one, as much as I love, it is very thin and it's cotton. So like January, when we were camping in the mountains in the snow, I was freezing. So I definitely, definitely knew this year to go ahead and step up my game in something a little warmer. So as you see, I, I like it. I, I love the color, you know, and I like just uh, the aesthetics. Um, I have pockets here. This is normally where I put my gloves when I'm not using them. They go in there. There's pockets up here. And then you can put your hands in here. All right, then opening this up, there's a pocket in here. And in here I have the Thrunite TT10 flashlight. Now this light is, I, I really like it. Thrunite really has yet to make anything that I don't like. However, this one is slightly large. I really wouldn't 
consider carrying this in person like it, i'm sorry on my body if it wasn't the fact that it's winter and i carry a coat so you're able to carry a little bit more stuff there is a you know it does come with a sheet that you can attach to your hip i'm i'm fine i'm just gonna keep it in my coat for now and uh yeah so we'll have a review coming in pretty soon on the through night tt10 putting this back other than that um at the very bottom of the zipper you see i have one of those exotac tinder zips and you've seen this recently when we reviewed it you cut this open and then the inside there's a material that will burn continuously for about two minutes really good stuff i was really impressed by it so i, I went ahead and added these to all my coats um so yeah it's always there just like the match on my hat you know it's just there in case i need it but other than that it looks cool and i think that's about it for this coat Oh, moving on to my gloves. Now, once again, talking about my old gear, you've seen me for a long time using gray gloves, a gray pair of gloves. And those were cheapy. I bought them at Target too. I think I bought them the same day I bought my army green jacket. Um, but they were just beat to hell. And they were quite thin, once again. The, you know, so w planning for this trip, knowing I was going to be in a much colder environment, I bought these minus 33, 100% Merino wool fingerless gloves. So they look really cool. I really like them. You can feel the quality. They keep me warm. And once again, I like fingerless gloves because it still allows me dexterity to do things. So if I'm carving or, you know, something like that, my hands, I still have movement. I don't like mittens or, or gloves or that kind of stuff that are completely cover your fingers. So yeah, coat, hat, gloves. And like I said, when I'm not using them, they go in these pockets. So there you go. Other than that, we have a bandana. I'm just putting it up here because later on at night it gets cold. I cover up. Okay, so I'm removing the coat. From here you see a notepad and pen. You've seen this a million times with me. I'm always writing down ideas or objectives, that kind of stuff. From here I have on my wrist my Timex Weekender watch. Simplistic. It's very simple, but I like it. Then once again, it goes with that green, that foliage green that I really like, that olive drab. So we got that. And moving down to my belt. This is where all the cool stuff is. So right here in my pocket, I carry my Titan light from Exotac. This lighter is just bomb proof. I love it. It looks so cool. I always get really cool comments. You know, people are, um, they remark on how cool it looks. Okay, right here, moving on to this, my pouch that you always see me carrying. Um, one new thing that I added, I had it years ago, but I didn't really use it, so I took it off, is this Victorinox. Hand, uh, it's a sharpener for your knives. Now the jury's still out because I had never really used it to be honest. So I just stopped, you know, I just put it away. Um, it's Victorinox, so I'm sure it's quality. I just don't have a lot of experience where I can like comfortably recommend it or not. So I still got to do more testing on that. Before I had a flashlight here, but I gave it away, so the space was vacant. So I decided to bring this along. In the back, I have a backup lighter, just a cheapy Bic. And here's where it gets really cool. I left the Victorinox Trekker at home, my Swiss Army knife, and I instead brought the Leatherman Blast. Now, the Leatherman Blast is really awesome. Uh, this model is no longer made by Leatherman, and I came across a really cool deal for 30 bucks to get the, you know, it was being sold. Um, so I jumped on it, and I really like it. Once again, being Leatherman, you got your pliers right there wire cutters this one has locking tools it has knife it has scissors a folding uh, i'm sorry a small saw a screwdriver so you know it has what you expect from a leatherman Re i really like it i definitely like it more than the leatherman wingman that i have um if i had to choose i still think i, I prefer the victorinox trekker but that's once again because i've carried it almost daily for seven years so i know where all the tools are i don't even have to look you know to access a specific tool this one when i'm working on something i'm on a roof or something I, I have to stop and look around to find what i'm looking for which screwdriver and all that stuff so that's not the fault of the tool that's just me my lack of experience with it but there we go new multi-tool and this one i am not gonna review what's the point they, they don't make it anymore but uh really like it sorry if i'm stuttering guys i'm, I'm getting cold but uh, there we go back pocket a backup bandana all right moving on to my belt knife look at this thing the LT right gen 5 knife a beast of a knife 
Now, you guys know LT Right Knives, they make some really quality stuff. And this one really doesn't change too much. I mean, this is essentially just a, a buff version of a Kephart knife. You know, it's very similar to their Genesis. I have I happen to own the Genesis in a flat grind. So I'm comfortable. I'm, I'm well aware of, like, the handle and all that stuff. Um, the quality of LT Right Knives, it has a killer 90-degree spine for starting fires. You know, pretty comfortable, A2 steel. This one has a saber grind, and it is longer than your average Genesis knife. So, it's definitely going to be more of a workhorse. Um, I will be making a review on this pretty soon. Hopefully, I make a bow drill and maybe cook up a rabbit with it. And then it comes with the sheath. Standard JRE industry sheath that comes with the LT Wright knives. And one thing I added was, uh, I'm sorry, not added, but I kept, is the dangler. Because I normally remove danglers from my knives. I don't like them. I like my knife to just be snug against my hip but with this being cold you know the in a cold winter camping i have my coat on it's just easier that this way for me to access my knife when i have my coat on but uh once again let me show this baby off check that out moving down to my boots of course i always carry uh wear my justin cowboy boots these have been resold recently um you know, I just like cowboy boots. I understand that this weather that I'm, we're in with snow, these boots are not ideal for it. You know, in an ideal world, I would have bought some, you know, some go, um, what do you call them? The Arctic muck boots or something like that. However, I had to buy tires and bought a new coat, new gloves. So, you know, I'm not rich. So I'm just making do with what I have. I have wool socks underneath. In fact, I'm wearing thermal uh, underclothing all over, you know, in my pants and a shirt as well underneath so I can be warmer. And I did remove the spurs because they're iron. You know, the spurs are they're metal and metal's a conductor. You know, I'm gonna be freezing my damn ankles with them out here. So I left them at home. Moving up here, another LT Wright knife. You've seen this before. This is the LT Wright JX3 knife. So this knife doesn't see a lot of action because you know I have a belt knife and I have a, a multi-tool that has a knife. So this one rarely sees action, but because of that, I have it razor sharp for an emergency. Um, and you've, see, you've seen, we made a review on it where we made a squirrel stew, made a one-stick fire. So this knife is small, but it, it can work. It definitely can work. Really rugged. And I have sentimental value because it was given to me by Chris Tanner from Prepared Mind 101 and LT Wright. So I always have that here as a backup cutting tool. And then over here on this boot, I did something a little different this time, and I don't know if it's a good idea or it's just stupid or whatever, but once again, you know, I'm just trying to think outside the box. And with this, I decided, since they're always covered, you know, um, I decided to just put like a good amount of paracord. I have about 25 feet of paracord, and I just wrapped it around the ears, the loops of the boot, and they don't get in my way or anything. Um, but whenever I do need cordage, if I need cordage, I have some there for emergency. Of course, I would have some in my pack or whatever. But um, like I said, I'm just trying to think outside the box. So it could be dorky, you know, it could be dumb. But um, yeah, you know, I put this, put this down. Nobody knows. I'm not, you know, it's not a cumbersome to me in any way. And I have some cordage there on me at all times. So I'm going to test that out for a while. Okay, and now for my new haversack. Check this beauty out. It is so awesome. This is the new haversack from the Hidden Woodsman. This one's called the M44 haversack or the Eisenhower. Um, inspired by a lot of more like a World War II style designs. But I mean, I just think it's so awesome. Check out the logo right there of the Hidden Woodsman. I love these straps. Adjustable straps right here. They look so cool. Okay, so this is going to get a review once I have more months testing it, more more experience with it. But for now, I mean, it, it's Hidden Woodsman, so you know it's quality. And I just really like the design, and it looks very different from what he's done before. Now, back here, there is a place, a pocket here where you can place, you know, you could put a map, notepad, something like that. I have this extra small pouch from the Hidden Woodsman. And in there, I normally carry my microphone. But since we're filming, of course, it's not being used Um it's in use right now, so it's not in there. But I just put that down. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. See what I'm carrying. All right, so here we go. First things first is my Howling Dingo Kangaroo Leather Pouch. 
So you've seen this here and there. I'll be reviewing, I'll be giving more information on Howling Dingo products. Now, Howling Dingo is Al, he has a YouTube channel, he's in Australia. And uh, man, I mean, check this out, it looks just so awesome. And once again, the kangaroo leather. That's exotic, that's really cool, and I like that old world look of this. And here it's basically my, my backup fire kit. I have another Exotac fire sleeve. This keeps a bic in there uh, with uh, a rubber cover that, you know, it's able to float, it's able to just provide better grip, all that stuff. I really like it. Pine Fire, it's some little things to start fire. Pine Fire is no longer a company that exists anymore, so that sucks, but their stuff was really good. A cotton ball and another Exotac tinder, tinder tin, and this one has fat wood shavings. So, if I need to make a fire in a hurry, which we're going to be doing right now before the sun sets because it's damn cold out right now, uh, we're going to put these things to good use. But yeah, so once again, Howling Dingo, really good stuff here. I'm just shoving this thing in there because I'm cold. But yeah. Really cool little pouch. Moving on, I have a secondary flashlight, and this is normally the flashlight I have on my person. Normally, the, the Through Night T1. I love this thing. This is my favorite EDC flashlight of all time. But since I have a larger flashlight on my coat right now, I decided to put this one away in here, so I'm not carrying too many things in my pockets. So, a redundant source of illumination. Here is my nesting cup and canteen. This is from the Pathfinder School. I got this years ago, I think like 2015, I think. Um, and yeah, just, you can boil water, you know, you can make food, coffee, whatever the case may be. So I have a container on me. And that's the beauty of having a, a taller haversack that I'm able to fit this in there comfortably. So there's that. The lid for the nesting cup. This is a one tigress poncho. So this is just in case, um, you know, it rains or something like that. I have a small form of micro shelter that can help me out. Uh, and this actually came in handy during our winter camping trip. If you saw that video a couple of videos ago, uh, back in like August, uh, it, we had a really huge hailstorm, and it just kept raining on continuously during that camping trip. So this definitely came in handy and it doesn't take up much space. my OutXE portable charger. So this helps me out charging my phone, which we used to record, uh, charges the flashlights, charges the lanterns. So really like this thing. And once again, this one's not too big and bulky where it's not gonna be fit in there comfortably. So there we go, charger. And then here's another Howling Dingo product. This is the sheath for the Baco Laplander. So if I'm, if I'm gonna be sawing down a lot of wood, all that stuff, I can just remove this from the pack, place it on my belt. And there we go, I got my saw ready to go. And this saw I've had since forever, uh, but it's still, still pretty decent, still good. But uh, yeah, once again, Al from Howling Dingo made this beautiful leather sheath. And I love simplicity when it comes to sheaths. I don't like things that come with uh, like attachments and designs and all that stuff. I don't like that. So. I have an extra cutting tool in here. Okay, now there's a small secondary pocket back here. I have a little crappy wooden spoon that I carved in Arizona. I have the Hidden Woodsman uh, and Dexter Cutlery meat fork. So when it's time to chow down noodles or stew, I mean meat or something. Oh, and check out this ferro rod. What a beauty. This was sent to me, actually, for Christmas last year um, by Ernie from the YouTube channel Paleo Hiker MD. And look at this. It's so, it's so comfortable. It's so cool looking. I actually haven't used it this year because I was testing a lot of Exotac products this year. So I was using lighters uh, during my camping trips and all that. So it, doesn't, it hasn't seen any action until now that we're getting out here. And um, yeah, so big thank you to Ernie. This thing is just awesome really badass so i can't wait to use this with my lt right get a fire started and he makes some good food tonight because it is cold and we are hungry then of course this is uh connect this to my portable battery bank and uh, charge my phone I'm, I'm sorry charge my flashlights or something 
This is just uh, the through night flashlight, the, the manual. And then emergency thermal blanket. These don't really do much to be honest, at least I don't think so, but it doesn't hurt to have it in there. And I think that's it. There's a second one, a second uh, connector, I'm sorry. Because uh, there's you, you can charge two things at once on that battery bank. So there we go. And that's about it for me. All right, so this is how I usually have the pack. And once again, I really like that pack. I think it looks really cool. And uh, I really like my new stuff. So as you saw, um, I'm just more prepared this winter than I was in previous winters uh, with wool gloves. I have a, a wool coat. Not 100%, but it's better than nothing. Um, new hat, and then I'll be switching to a trapper hat in case it does get too cold. So I'm definitely meeting the weather requirements here. Plus, of course, I have all my stuff. I have my cutting tools, my multi-tool. I have flashlights. I have sources of illumination, my micro shelters. Uh, so I have the basics covered. Um, now, of course, I'm not trying to survive completely just on this stuff. Of course, we have our tents and all that stuff over there. But for whatever emergency I may need, I have what I can, you know, to help me out. So uh, that's about it for me. So from here, I'm going to switch it around and then Corvo's going to give you his rundown.